Hi learners, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we are doing to, we'll do the part two of the same that is the midterm assessment. We have already done the some of the questions there. You can have a look at the previous video. So we'll start here from the long answer questions, which is already this paper has been. You can see the last pages of your book. You can find these questions over there. So now. Here they are asked for the find the value of this one. So in this one, the same thing is written over here. So you can see here twos and threes and fives. So what we have to do in the numerator also, we'll see this. This is six and this is 15. So we'll make it first in two. That will be six is going to be two into three and the rest to three. But you have to put a bracket because this is for both of them. Again, with 15, we can make it to 3 into 5. That will be, again, the bracket because this, the power this 4 is going to be for both of them. And this will be 2, means 2 into 2. You know, A raised to M, raised to N, that will be A raised to M, MN. So you have to multiply it. And this remains the same. Now you will write here, you will split it 2 raised to 3 into 3 raised to 3. Again, here 3 raised to 4 into 5 raised to 4. This is here. And this the same. So now what will you do here? We can bring here two raised to three as it is here, but you can see here three. So you know the rule a raised to m into a raised to n that is going to be a raised to m plus n. So you are going to add this one three plus four that is going to be three raised to seven. This is going to be the same. Again, the denominator is going to be the same. So now what you can see this the base two. Again, for this one the base three and for the, the base five. So we can we know the formula a raised to m divided by a raised to n that will be a raised to m minus n. So here this will be 3 minus 4. For this is going to be 7 minus 6. For this will be 4 minus 3. So here we can see this will be 3 minus 4 means that is going to be minus 1. For this one is just going to be 1. For this one is going, going to be 1. If it is 3 raised to 1, that is going to be 3. 5 raised to 1 means that is going to be 5. So now what you can see, this is the negative exponent. So you have to put make it to positive 1. So this is 15. So this will go in the numerator. And to make it to positive, that is going to be 2 raised to 1. That will be 2. So this can be also written as this is improper fraction. When you divide this one, that we can get as 7 integers 1 by 2. So 15 divided by 2. 2 7s are 14. This will be 1. So it is going to be, you go this way. So that will be 7 integers 1 by 2. Convert the following into decimals and arrange in ascending order. The ascending order means for the small to big. So first, now this one can be written as 13.5 because whenever the percentage sign means you have to divide by 100. So now this can be here. Uh, if you don't know how to change the decimal here, how to shift the decimals, now because here this is true, I'll show you one more way for this problem. So that is going to be 13.5 divided by 100 can be written as for the numerator we can write here. We'll write the number. So because this is after, you have to go from right to left. After one number is a decimal means you are going to divide it by 10 because this is here. And this is divided by 100 means this will be 100 by 1. So this is going to get flip over. So this is going to be 1 by 100. So now what you can see here, 135 is in the numerator. In the denominator, we can see three zeros. That is 1000. So now I'll write it here. So 135. 135, 1, 2, 3. So you will go backwards by 3, 1, 2, 3, and put a decimal over here. Hope this is clear. So that will be 0 0.135 because many of them get confused how to write this decimal directly. So you can follow. This is a bit long way, but it is 100%. You will get it right if you do this way. So same goes for this one. The same method you will follow this one. So that is going to be 0 0.132 for this one. We have done for... And now we'll see for this part. So you know now 17 is a smaller number if you're dividing it by 125. So now what you have to do, you have to put one zero. So that will be zero point. So this will be one. This will be 125. So five. This will be four. So you'll put here one zero. So 125 threes are, that is going to be 375. So now it will be going to be seven, again 50. So this is going to be six, uh, 750. So that is going to be 0 0.136 so now what you can see here because ascending means small this is a smaller number then the second one will be this one and this one so but you have to write the original one for this one 
uh, what will you write here? But that is 13.2 divided by 100. Then you will make a per 13.5 divided. That is what? 13.5 percent originally is 13.5 percent and then comes the 17 by this one so but you have to put this symbol why so this symbol says that this number is bigger than this one and again here this number is bigger than this one so wherever the mouth opens that is the bigger number so we can we also call as this crocodile's mouth now here if 3x minus 7 by 2 is greater than or equal to 4 x belongs to n here write the solution set and represent it on the number line first we'll write the we'll solve and write the solution set for it so same thing is written here so when you solve this one this is here when this goes here that is going to get multiplied so that will be a whereas this are going to be the same so this is the same eight if you take this minus seven on the other side that is going to be plus seven this is the same so this will be 15 so x is going to be this is the same so that is going to be 15 divided by this 3 so that is going to be 5 so x is greater than or equal to 5 so we can write the solution set means it is also e is equal to 5 means you have to include 5 in it so we'll start with 5 6 7 8 9 which is greater than but it will go on the fixed number is not given because it says greater than or equal to 5 it doesn't say just equal to 5 so this is the solution set for that so we'll plot it on the number line 5 6 7 8 and so on but before that we have to write some numbers now before 5, instead of just starting from 5, we'll write some numbers. You can write them. You also include 2. So this I wrote 3 and 4 extra. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and then so on. So this is the number line. This I have shown that 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 because this is gone here. But there is also 9 in it. So you can put one, 1 extra or 2 extra whatever. Now here, 14 integer 2 by 7 percentage. See here, be careful with this percentage sign. Of what number is 35? Of what number? We don't know the number. So now let us select the number bx. You can use any variable. So first thing, we'll solve this part because it is a percentage one. So now what we can do here, this will be 14, 7, 98 plus 2. That will be 100. And this will be divided by 7 percentage. But then this is percentage means this 100 divided by 7. Again, you're going to divide it by 100 because the percentage sign is here. So now what you can do now see this part this is in the numerator this is in the denominator so 100 by 7 numerator as it is but this can be written as 100 by 1 here so this is going to get flip over so that will be 1 by 100 so now what will be that 100 divided by this 700 hope this part is clear that is what is written here so now this and this gets cut off so that will be 1 by 7 so now what they say this of what number so 1 by 7 off and what number means x is 35 so off means you can multiply so now is equal to 35 so x we have to find out 35 and this will go on the other side this is multiplication this this is division so it will get multiplied so multiply by 7 so the x is 245 that is the number what they have asked kunal sold a tv set for rupees 17600 at a loss of 12 percent find the cost price so selling price uh, sold means selling price of this TV is 17,600. Loss is given as 12% and you have to find the cost price. So we have the formula. We will start with the selling price. Why? Because see here, whenever the formula is given in that thing, only one should be unknown. So we know the selling price. We know the loss percentage. So only this is unknown. But if in the formula, the two are unknowns, we cannot solve that problem. So we can start, we can use this formula. So now what will you do? In place of selling price that is given 100 minus loss percentage is given we have to write here 12 and cost price we have to find out so here this is the same after this will be 88 this is the same so now what will you do this 100 will take on this side so it will get multiplied and this will go in the denominator that is cost price so after solving this one 81 ones are 81 200 so when you multiply this into this that is going to be 20,000 in the cost price and that is what they asked if he had to gain 15% at what price should he have sold the TV set? So gain is 15% on the same problem. The cost price is what? Now we got 20,000. So we have to find uh, the selling price. So now what will you do here? In this one, uh, we know the gain and we know the cost price. So what would gain percentage we know? So gain percentage is equal to gain divided by CP into 100. 
because we know this one we know the cost price so we have first thing we will find the gain directly we cannot find the selling price because we don't know the selling price means the gain should be known so if you are using the formula gain is equal to selling price minus cost price so we don't know this as well as we don't know the selling price only we know the cost price here we know the gain percentage but not the gain so we have to first find out the gain so that is only possible with this formula so this will be 15 here so now will be the gain is here as it is this is going to be 20,000 into 100 so this gets cut so this will go here that will be 15 into 200 that is going to be gain so when you multiply this one that is going to be 3000 is gain now we will find out we found out gain here so now we can find out with this one the selling price so we know the gain now we know the cost price so selling price is here so use this formula gain is equal to selling price minus cost price so gain is 3000 we don't know the selling price and the cost price is given as 20000 so here we can bring this one minus 20000 on this side that will be plus 20000 that is the selling price so when you add this one that is 23,000 is the selling price. So you can, you can write here, you should have sold at rupees 23,000. Find the rate of simple interest if rupees 6,500 amounts to rupees 7,800 in two and a half years. In such problems, we have many times we have a problem like what is this, um, this number and what is this number? Actually, the interest is not given here. This is whatever the first number you can see that is the principal. And this is the amount given that is 7,800. So only the thing is, if you know these things, other things are very easy. So we will write the given things first. That is the rate is given here. The principal is 6,500. The amount is 7,800. And this is the number of years that is T, that is two and a half years that we can also write as five by two. So two, one, this will be four, four plus one, five by two years. So now think what we have to do, we have to find out the interest first. So now what will you do? A is equal to, this is the formula, amount is equal to principal plus interest. So we know the amount that is 7,800. We know the principal that is 6,500 and we don't know the interest. So what will you do? Here now this will be, if you take this on this side, that is going to be minus 6,500, that is interest. So this will be 1,300 is equal to interest. But we want the rate of interest now. So we are going to use that formula. This is, that is the interest is equal to principal into rate into time by 100 p into r into t by 100 and now we got the interest is 1300 so we'll write here this is principal is already given 6500 the rate is not given the rate of interest and this t means that is going to be 5 by 2 and this is divided by 100 so hope this part is clear so now what will you do these two zeros get cut so this two can be taken on this side that will get multiplied and this the whole part 65 into 5 that will go in the denominator and this R they will remain on the right hand side. So when you simplify this, you can simplify and see 65 ones are 65, 20 is a 5 ones are 5, 4 are and 4 twos are that will be 8. But forget, don't forget to write this one. That is the percentage sign because this R that is always in percentage. So rate of interest. So we can say rate of interest is 8%. A car travels 330 kilometers in 6 hours. Find its speed. For the, this is given as the distance is given as 130 kilometer, and t is six hours. So we know the formula that is p is equal to distance by time. So now you have to remember this one. See d divided by k. So you know the word detergent. So it starts with this t, d, and k. So this is one of the way to remember. So the so because again there is a confusion with this formula. So just try to remember this one formula. Because now sometimes the time is asked. So what will you do? You will again write here t is equal to d divided by s. And then again, sometimes the distance is asked. So d is equal to speed into distance. Don't remember all three. You can just remember one formula. And later on, you can just cross multiply and get the answer. So here, here it was direct. It was OK. But in some cases, that is also asked. So you can follow the same formula. So distance is 330. Divided this time is 6. So when you simplify this one, so that is going to be 55. And the speed is always that is going to be kilometer per hour because this is kilometer and this is an hour. Or it can be also if this is given in meter, then this will be then you have to convert it to second. So meter per second. So here that is kilometer per hour. How long will it take to cover 
440 kilometers. So the time is not given. Distance is given at 440 kilometer. Here the same problem that is speed is given that is 55. Again, we are going to use now see here the time they have asked, but we are not going to change the formula. We are going to use the same formula. So speed means in place of the speed, we'll write here 55. Distance we'll write here 440 and we'll write here time. We will cross multiply this one. So 55 into T, that will be 440. So T is going to be 440. This is multiplication. So this will get divided. So when you simplify this, this is going to be 8. So it will take 8 hours to cover 440 kilometers. Now for the piece 1350, 25 kg of rice can be bought. What is the price of 15 kilogram of rice? So in this, whenever you have such type of problems, this is given first that you have to use the unitary method. So cost of 25 kilogram of rice is 1350. So first you have to find out cost of one kilogram of gas so that of rice. So this will be you're going to cross multiply. So that will be 1350 and this will go in the denominator divided by 25. So when you divide it, you get 54 rupees. So now you got for one kg rupees 54. So now we are going to find out for cost of 15 kilogram of rice. So that is going to be 15 into 54 into 15 or 15 into 54, both is the same. So that is going to be rupees 810. How many kilogram of rice can be bought for 1620? For so for rupees 54, that is one kilogram. So for rupees, this will be rupees, this will be one below the other. If it is, then it is easy to cross multiply. So this will be how much? So what will you do? 1620. Divided by 254. When you divide this one, you get 30 kilogram. So two numbers in the ratio. This is also one of the important problem. So two numbers are in the ratio. 4 is to 5. When 6 is added to each of this, the ratio becomes 9 is to 11. Find the number. So now let the numbers be. This ratio is given. So we can write here 4x and 5x. So this is the important step. So now what did they say? This can be also written. This always we can write here. We can divide it. So what we can write here now, when 6 is added to each of these, so to this and this one, if you are adding 6, so we can also divide it as I told you. This will be 4x by 5x. So when we are adding 6 to it, here as well as here, so that becomes 9 is to 11 means we can also write this 9 is to 11 as 9 by 11. So that will be 9 by 11. So the simplest way now one is we will cross multiply. So 11 will go here and this will go along with 9. So that will be 11 into 4x plus 6, but always this should be a bracket. There are, there are two terms is equal to 9 into 5x plus 6. So now we will expand it. We get this one again. We are going to expand it. We get this step. So now let us bring x on one side. So 44x minus this 45x, and this will be 54 plus 66 will be minus 66. So now see here, this is minus 45 plus 44 means minus x. And this will be mi minus 66 plus 54 means that will be minus 12. So whenever there is both number minus on that, that becomes positive. Or so this is x is 12. I'll, I'll show the other way. Minus 6 is minus 12. So x is going to be actually this is multiplication. We, there is one over here. So minus 12. This will be this is multiplication. So this is going to get divided. And whenever, whenever the division sign, div minus divided by minus is always going to be plus. Hope this part is clear to you. So now we've got x is 12, then we want the numbers they said. So 4x was the number one of the number, 4 into 12, that is 48. And the other number is 5x, means 5 into 12, that is 60. Therefore, the numbers are 44 and 60. So by this one, we have completed today's work. Do like and subscribe to my channel, so you get the notification of other parts. Thank you.